again. Uh, this time is Stephen King fans here for another um, list video for Stephen King. This time not for the books, but for the movies. All right, so I'm going to show my 10 favorite Stephen King uh, movies, or rather adaptations, you know, because some of these are for TV. You know, as you know, Stephen King has had a lot of his bibliography adapted to the screen. Not always with great results, but there have been some very good ones. And let's get started. You know, the first one would be the first one. There would be Carrie, right there. And here, of course, the big, uh, um, the difference, uh, what makes the difference is that it's directed by Brian De Palma. All right. So that's what makes this movie great. Follow the book very closely. And this is the, of course, the, the original, not the remake. I don't have problems with the remake, but I don't feel it added anything. All right. Uh, but this one is excellently directed good suspense absolutely great performances by C.C. Spacek Piper Laurie as the mom also early roles right there with John Travolta and Amy Irving very good Carrie a total classic not just of Stephen King uh, adaptations but just horror movies in general same thing can be said for this one which is the television miniseries Salem's Lot from the book of the same name. Again, the director makes all the difference. Right here, it is a Toby Hooper, Hooper directing. Uh, Stephen King has a long, sprawling novel about vampires in a small town. Of course, that lead vampire gave an entire generation nightmares. Right there, very well directed. This is the Blu-ray that if you can get it, get it because the image has been cleaned up really good. It looks fantastic. Okay, Salem's Lot. There was also a remake for that, for that uh, novel, a miniseries remake, which is pretty good. Not as good as that one, but but pretty good. Okay, now we go with another one of his early novels, The Shining, directed by Stanley Kubrick. All right, so we have at the end at the back card says the first epic horror film. It is indeed epic. All right, uh, that image has become iconic. The movie itself, I do consider it one of the greatest horror films ever made. Famously, uh, Stephen King uh, has a problem with this movie. Some say that he hates it. Uh, he does not, and in fact, he says so. In the introduction to the to the Shining novel, if you have if you have a, a more recent edition of the Shining, you know the, the the novel, it will have a foreword right there by Stephen King where he mentions the movie. Okay, he doesn't hate the movie; just simply has a problem with the characterization, mainly that of Jack Nicholson right there, who he says that ever since we see him first, you know, in the movie, you know that guy is totally crazy, whereas in the book. He goes crazy gradually. All right, so that's really kind of like the main issue. But anyway, talking about the movie, the movie's great. Does it change a, a few things from the book, but um, those changes really work. And then we go, once again, the director makes all the difference. Here we have The Dead Zone. Directed by none other than David Cronenberg. Fantastic performance right there by Christopher Walken. You know, the story is great. It's also one of the, my favorite um, uh, Stephen King novels. And, um, you know, a very, a very uh, moody movie. Great moments. Like I said, very well directed. The Dead Zone about a man with the psychic powers and... Uh, those psychic powers are sometimes more than he can handle. Okay? Highly recommended. After this, we will go with It. All right? And by a hair, I will prefer the remake over the miniseries, which I do have, and I, and I also think it's fantastic. Okay? But for the purpose of this list, I'm going with the, with the remake. Here I have, you know, chapter one on DVD, chapter two on Blu-ray. I don't really mind. Okay. And um, like the miniseries, this one wisely separates 
uh, the stories of the kids and the adults. As you know, the book takes place in two timelines at the same time, which is the story of the characters as kids and then the, the characters as adults. And the, the book jumps back and forth between those two timelines, whereas the miniseries and these two movies do not. Okay? There, there is some uh, flashback scenes, but, but mostly keeps the story separate, which I think works better that way. Okay, so here we go. It, the remake, came out in two theatrical installments, and uh, both of them very good. Of course, as I said in a, in a previous video, I was kind of disappointed that neither the miniseries nor this um, uh, remake um, really go into the almost the Lovecraftian elements of it itself you know instead focusing on the clown persona of this uh, of this uh, extra dimensional being which uh, feeds on fear and takes on the form of your greatest fear you know so it really goes it really focuses on on the, the clown on pennywise the clown whereas um you can even see it on the back cover right there whereas the book Also has the clown, of course, but really it gives us glimpses of this, uh, of that uh, this creature is much more than just a clown um, with teeth. All right, so, but anyway, great movie. After this, we will go with, uh, and I'm not doing this in any particular order. Okay, so just just my ten favorites. Uh, Cujo, one that I do not have the movie, and I have not read the book. In fact. Uh, I don't have the movie, but of course I've seen it. I saw it when it was uh, released in theaters when it originally came out, and I've also seen it on um, streaming channels uh, uh, recently. Okay, so a very simple premise: it's a mom and her son trapped in a vehicle in a car, where and uh, a rabbit uh, Saint Bernard is um, is uh, stalking them. So very simple. It's almost like Jaws or something, you know. But very well made, very good suspense, you know, very good performances, well directed. I'm going to put a picture of the poster over here. After this, we'll go with one with The Mist, one that I also do not have the, the movie, though of course I have read the book. And I also have the book on, on audio, on, on dramatized audio, both in the CD and vinyl, okay? And, uh, well, anyway, The Mist, one of the, again, a very simple premise, people trapped inside a supermarket where, and um, other dimensional beings, creatures, are stalking them, you know, and of course the, the highlight there is how they react to the creatures and to each other, you know, the, this uh, story, both in movie form and in, um, in, an, in the short, in the, the novella. It has a great, great characterization, and it really, it really transfers to the to the screen, and of course the the screen adaptation has one of those uh, hit you in the gut endings that you don't forget soon. All right. Next would be uh, eleven twenty two sixty three. I do have it. That's the miniseries, right there, about a man going back in time to try to stop the assassination of uh, John F. Kennedy. He believes that uh, this uh, stopping this assassination, not just uh, by saving uh, JFK's life, but that event, by preventing that event, it would also alter the course of, uh, of, of history, you know, for, for the better. Because he believes that that is a turning point in, uh, in American history. All right? So he goes back in time through a time portal uh, to, to try to stop that. James Franco stars in this. He is very good as the title character, the time traveler. And, um, of course, there there's a, with the caveat, that that time portal only takes you to a specific point in, in time and space. So he cannot alter it, you know, just like, like in H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, 
where he can go to uh, several, several, whatever time he wants, you know, by setting some dials. In this portal, it's already fixed where you can go. So you have to go there to that time and wait until that day arrives. Very good adaptation. The book is very good also. Okay. We then go to um, Dr. Sleep. I do not have the movie. I have read the book. I'm going to put the poster over here. And this one is a continuation of the story in the... Sh uh, or I, let me rephrase that. It is a story set in the universe of The Shining. All right. Where we have the boy character from The Shining, Danny Torrance, all grown up now, now a man in his 40s, still has the psychic powers of The Shining. And still uses them from time to time. And he meets another young person, a young girl, who has these powers as well. These powers of, uh, of the Shining. And um, they are pursued by this group of um, almost immortals called the True Knot. And who, they are pretty nasty people. Who actually feed on psychic power, so they're kind of like psychic vampires. All right. So this movie really deftly, very skillfully uh, brings everything together. You know, brings the the Shining movie, the one with Jack Nicholson, the Shining original novel. You know, brings those two together, and then adds more to the story. So. A lot of people say that it's a, a sequel to The Shining. Not really, you know, because there are some elements that continue, but it's not really a sequel to that story. It is a new story regarding, like I said, these these uh, psychic vampires and these this new uh, psychic-powered girl. All right. Um, starring um, that the guy who is um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I am drawing a blank on his name. But, um, I'll put it right here, of course. But, but anyway, very good. Very well directed, and I think it's a very satisfying read and a very satisfying movie. And we will end with 1922, which is a novella. A novella from the book Full Dark North Stars, which is, those novellas in that book are really, really dark, you know. And uh, I think this adaptation really captured that darkness stars thomas jane as a very poor uh farmer i believe he's somebody who lives in the in the country right there who has to do something very horrible for money so it goes on from there there is a supernatural angle you know and um it's a it's a really creepy story i really liked it that's a, a bit unusual you know because most people would not pick that story. That one, I believe, was a Netflix original. Did not come out in theaters. I also don't have it on a DVD or Blu-ray. All right, of course, there's several honorable, honorable mentions here. We could talk about Pet Cemetery, the original. I did like the, 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 the not the sequel, the remake. Okay, I did like the remake. Though I've only I only seen it once when I came out in theaters. I haven't seen it since then. This one I've seen several times. I think it's pretty good. Very good, in fact. Though it has not aged well with the, with the evil little kid. Kind of looks a little ridiculous at times. All right. But it is very good. Also very good is, is one episode of the, of the series Nightmares and Dreamscapes. Okay which I believe it was called The Four-Sided Triangle. I'll put a picture over here. That one is a crime drama story, which I think works very well. The rest of that series was a, was a bit underwhelming, but that particular episode was very good. All right, another honorable mention is, of course, uh, uh, Christine right there, which I almost, almost put on the list, and by, uh, directed by John Carpenter. Like I said, when you've got a good director, you're good to go. All right, so that's it for my Stephen King uh, 10 best movies, plus some honorable mentions there. All right, uh, 
Thank you very much for watching, and keep watching uh, Stephen King and reading him as well. So long.